Okay, continuing coverage of events unfolding in the Eurozone. Greece's finance minister resigning. Cyprus requesting a bailout. Spain as well as expected. We're adding Alex Drashevsky now of Recovery Partners, who has been involved in sovereign debt restructurings. Uh, he's here with uh, Robin Farzad, who we have in New York at uh, Bloomberg Business Week, and Brian Miller of the Globe and Mail. Um, Alex, thanks for coming in on short notice. Um, our last guest, uh, David Buick, on the line from London, said there's perhaps a severe danger of the Eurozone coming apart now well i thought that that was the case two years ago i mean it's the, this crisis is now starting to accelerate you've got five out of 17 of the eu countries in bailout mode you've got a bailout mechanism that doesn't work it's not funded it's not fundable you've got declining credit quality amongst the sovereigns and the banks you've had an ongoing bank run in progress now for about 18 months in a variety of countries so yeah the, the crisis is intensifying and this is something we said would happen unless proper action was 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 failed to be taken at the outset which was to have a write down and reckoning of all these bad debts how much more time is there impossible to say this thing the crisis could erode overnight it, it, this thing could limp along for another six months or six years but it's at this st stage it's almost impossible to say what the likely outcome is going to be we're in that black swan scenario we also warned about we we basically said that the policy authorities have constrained their future freedom of movement by doing what they did and kicking the can down the road in the way they did and they've opened the door to more black swans so this this crisis is now getting increasingly more difficult to understand and particularly with respect to the full implications do you see a lehman like event occurring uh, as i say the confidence could erode in one or more of the big banks that are in trouble uh, could erode in one or more of the sovereigns that are in trouble and things could spiral downward very quickly thereafter it's uh, very serious um, robin uh, back to you in new york um, Alex uh, sort of had some interesting body language when he, you couldn't see it when he said very serious. Uh, does this feel like the most serious point to you? This feels like the most serious point to me since at least, you know, and I'm saying this from a New York centric point of view since the scary days of September 2008. You get this feeling that one of these, one of these players in a really unwieldy 17 plus nation uh, Hydra can yell fire, can yell, uh, can, can do something and kind of say, listen, if everything is melting down, I'm going to shout first so I can get my vested interests in front of the queue. We saw that with Spain last week and its banks. We see it with a small player like Cyprus right now. And as the, the, the countries themselves individually see if, if anything like, like whole hog bank runs are happening on their watch, if they have to scream out and do something that can only accelerate this process, you feel like we're in a very vulnerable period for that right now. And um, it's, it's surprising to see Angela Merkel in that context come out with um, really kind of stand pat language right now at the Euro Summit. Brian, does, does it feel like we're approaching a worst moment? Well, there's no question. We've been moving toward it for some time. and. Uh, Robin's right about Merkel. This is a time when she needs to show leadership, and not just leadership in terms of where Germany is going to position itself. She has to. She she and her government have to make a really tough decision now. Do they want to keep this thing or not? And if they want to keep it, they're going to have to stop opposing bank union. They're going to have to stop opposing a deposit insurance scheme that makes sense. And they're going to have to stop opposing euro bonds, which will take the pressure off these individual countries in the markets and maybe enable them to get back, uh, to get their finances back in order. Because as we know, some of these countries, like Italy, are not in terrible financial shape. They just can't get any money out of these markets. Even Spain has that but issue. But Brian, can, can, Germany, can Germany truly afford a, a full cordon off price tag, whatever it is? Well, I don't think they, they necessarily would have to go that far, but they do have to, they have to signal to the market that they're prepared to go as far as they have to, because the key is confidence. It's about a minute and a half here. Well, the, but the conundrum is, even if the Germans agreed to a deposit mechanism, even if they agreed to a fiscal union, even if they agreed to joint issuance of euro bonds, it doesn't solve the underlying economic problems, and that is you've got huge disparities in productivity rates 
and wages between Germany and the peripheral countries. And that's why the, if, if you want all that to be imposed on those peripheral countries, go for the, the fiscal union and all the rest of the bells and whistles, you still haven't solved the structural economic problems that precipitated this crisis in the first place. So you don't see any solution to it, is I what think you're we're, saying? I think we're in the Roche Motel. And um, we've said that for a long time. And you've yeah. got to you've got to take the bull by the horns. You've got to bite the bullet. Any other metaphor of similar in a similar vein, strong action needs to be taken now. And and I think it needs to be taken in the direction of cauterizing, identifying and cauterizing the biggest losses first. And that appears to be Greece. You know. And I think if they're not talking about exiting Greece in an orderly way now, this thing could. Uh, unravel in a very unpleasant it way. It sounds like it's pretty disorderly there right now. Yeah, with well, the, it is. With the finance is. minister leaving just, to, you know, days uh, after the, the days, election. Days, yeah, days. Yeah, it's disorderly. And, and unless somebody somebody calls the shot, you know, going down this path, if you're in a trading room and you want continue to go down this path, you'd eventually get the tap from your boss. They've thrown too much money on, onto a bad trade, and it's got to be recognized as a bad trade. Gents, we have to leave it there. Many thanks to all of you for sticking around today and for coming in, Alex. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's Robin Farzad with Bloomberg Business Week in New York. Alex Drzezewski of Recovery Partners here in Toronto. And Brian Milner of The Globe and Mail. If you missed any of the show, catch it online at bnn.ca. Send us an email at headline at bnn.ca. And catch us on the repeat at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. You're watching Headline on BNN.